Good evening and welcome to SACAP's Coaching Skills for Managers webinar. I am your host, Kaylin Philander, and I am the Coaching Manager at SACAP. A few house rules before we proceed. We will have a short Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Please send us your questions in the Q&A box located at the bottom of your screen. We are aware there is a high internet usage in the country, thus slowing down connection in some areas. We also know that load shedding might take place at any moment. And should you or any of our panelists be cut off due to this, kindly note that the recordings will be made available to you by next week. Please be advised that many of us are still working from home. So if you hear an occasional microwave beep or a child screaming in the background, we do apologize. Coaching Skills for Managers is an internationally accredited coaching course, which provides a strong framework for managers and leaders to immerse themselves in coaching skills and implement coaching conversations. The 12 week program carries a total of 30 ICF approved coach specific training hours. I'm so pleased to have the chance to introduce our course educator, Surveyor van der Horn, and alumnus coaching student, Ryan Stramrud. Surveyor is an ICF master certified coach and began her coaching career in response to the need to approach employee performance as a growth and development opportunity. Ryan is one of South Africa's top extreme adventurers and ice swimmers. So without further ado, I would like to hand over to Surveya. Welcome everyone. I'm very glad to be here. Thank you, Kaylin, for the introduction. Uh, my name is Svea. Some of you may know me. Some of you may have looked me up on LinkedIn, etc. But what I'd like to say is just a few words about my connection with, the, with this program is, um, as you can see, I'm an ICF pro uh, professional coach, and I'm also an adult educator. Um, I have a particular interest for many, many years already about the creativity, the courage that people bring to adult education. I think, as Kaylin said, many of you will be working from home. This may continue. And I've always, over all the years, been amazed at how SACUP students manage to bring the best of themselves while still maintaining doing all of what they need to do at work, at home, and in their community-based lives. So this program is designed to take all of that into account. Um, the other thing to say is that I am a systems thinking person in by nature, I think. I think about the connections between things. And so I think a lot about the web of life. And Kaylin's uh, comment was about conversations. And you may think to yourself, but we all have conversations all the time. Why do I need to do a program to teach me anything about how to have a conversation? So one of the things that I'm very aware of is that workplaces used to have um, a sort of a throwaway phrase, which was VUCA, you know, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. And it was a kind of a theoretical catchphrase. And I think that over the last two years, almost all of us at work have been plunged into the lived experience of what this really is and taken this from a catchphrase to something that we really need to equip ourselves with um, and also to be able to have conversations which are responsive. So one of the things that you can anticipate from this program is that it will take what you already are able to do and it will start moving you beyond that capability in a variety of ways. So when I say we'll take you beyond, um, first of all, this program will expand your mind. So you may want to have a look at this image and think to yourself, what does this say? Um, that is going to happen a lot when you do the reading on the program. You will find yourself reading things and thinking, what does this say? What does this mean to me? And the meaning is more important than what does this say? So whereas you may see this as opportunity is nowhere, or you may see this as opportunity is now here. That's part of what we'll be working with in the program is the diversity of perspectives that people bring and everyone's perspective is welcomed. Because in the workplace, as you know, as I know, as we all know, there's no such thing as people all seeing the world in the same way. So we'll be looking a lot at how can you use what you learn in this program to bring perspectives both to others but more importantly, to be able to expand your own mind, to be able to hold a wide variety of perspectives 
that come at you in the workplace. Um, so these I chose because I wanted to offer you something about what is the expansion of capacity that you might experience on this program. First of all, you can see cultivating growth. So coaching is all about a process of cultivating growth. And any of you who are gardeners will know that you can start out buying a plant and thinking it's going to grow in a particular way. And it then to an extent does some of what you'd hoped for and some of what it just decides to do. And I think this is very true for managers, for leaders, for people who are in functions which develop other people is people have their own ideas. And part of what we need to do is to think about how can we cultivate growth that is both in the organization's interest, but also is an expression of the individual and also allows your relationship with the person to be a progressive one, a constructive one, rather than to be the kind of workplace relationship where you think to yourself, wish this person wasn't on my team. So cultivating growth is something that will definitely be giving you skills um, and not so much giving them to you, but this program is designed to learn to coaching skills by coaching, rather than to just be thinking about or reading about things. And you'll probably hear a little bit more about that in a moment from Ryan, who has experienced this program. Then what are search spaces, you might ask? Well, search spaces are the way that we in conversations can take people's attention to different places because where our attention is, is what we tend to see. A little bit like the opportunity is now here or the opportunity is nowhere. Um, that is a meaning-making exercise, but also often in the workplace, people are over-focused on something too small or they are so widely attending that they actually can't focus. So search spaces are things that you will gain skills in about how to co construct conversations that offer people present search space. In other words, what are you doing at the moment that is working for you? Future search spaces, what might be happening in six months time when you are beyond this challenge that you currently have? And a past success search space is one that we use in coaching a lot is what do you remember from your experience, perhaps in other areas of your life that have helped you to make forward movement, make progress, create results, get on with other people, etc. So search spaces is something that a lot of the skill work is based on. Then the M, magnifying mastery. Um, you can see with the magnifying glass that it looks out onto the horizon. So we will do both coming in very focused, like you do with a magnifying glass, usually just to magnify a small piece of what you're seeing. Um, but at the same time, we'll also be offering you skills um, that will allow you to coach people where you keep both a horizon, whether it's the time horizon, whether it's other people, their environment stakeholders, in the perspective with them. And what are, we, what are we really looking to do is to equip you with skills and concepts that would allow you to magnify the mastery that to their surprise is often already in the people that you are coaching. They often think that they have not yet begun the expansion process. And I don't mean expansion as in eating too much like we've all been suffering from to an extent, but expansion of who they are as a person and also what they can offer to the team. So that was just a short glimpse of some of what we will be doing. And I'd like to now show you also the coaching definition that this program uses. So there it is, is coaching is seen by the RCF as partnering. And I'd like to just uh, highlight that word because I think if I think of my own experience, I started my own senior management work was in the CCMA and I was very aware of that as a senior manager, partnering was something that I didn't do much of. There was delegating, instructing, authorizing, a lot of words and verbs, but the, the word that we will be using and the verb that we'll be using is partnering. Um, and that means something about how do you maintain your own authority, your own role, your own jurisdiction in the workplace, while at the same time being able to respect but also generate 
a sense of equity with the people that you are coaching and seeing them as experts in their own lives while at the same time bringing the organizational world into view. So partnering is going to be critical and you will certainly learn how to expand your leadership and managerial skill set with this thing called partnering. It's then, so, it's then about being thought provoking and creative. So if you have an idea that you would like to be able to expand your already existing capability around creativity in the workplace, or you think this is something that I'm not particularly good at, this is a great program to help you do just that, is to find out how to evoke awareness, how to inspire people in a way that lets them maximize their personal and professional potential, always with a view to what is this organization about, what is its purpose, and how do we need people to be, and how do we need them to act inside the organization. So then finally, I'd like to show you something that will give you perhaps a glimpse into what you can expect week by week um, as we go through the program. So what we will work with a lot is what's called foreground and distinguishing features. So if you look at this picture, you'll probably recognize it's an ambiguous picture. It has at least two things you can see, but more. If we were together in the classroom, I would then be asking you and inviting you to talk about what do you see and then to begin to shape how can we have conversations with people that help them to see things rather than telling them what this is. So usually in the classroom, when I've shown this, people are inclined to say, oh, you can't see the woman's face. Let me tell you how to see it. And then they begin to tell people things rather than using inquiry. So we will use a lot of inquiry skills um, in the program. And if you're interested in thinking, well, what is she talking about? Where's this woman's face? I'm seeing a person with a musical instrument, or maybe it's a man with a banana on his head, or perhaps it's somebody who's smoking a pipe. Um, the distinguishing feature is the little eye that you see on the right hand side of the picture, which is a, looks like a piece of smoke or a piece of spit if you're seeing it as a person playing an instrument or smoking a pipe. But if you want to see it as the woman's face, that would be one of the things to pay attention to. So this course will equip you with small but significant spotting and drawing it to other people's attentions capability so that the small things that happen day to day in the workplace become things that can have significant growth for people, but also organizational impacts. Um, I would be very glad if you began to put your questions in the Q&A, if you've got any particular questions that we can answer that could help you to decide, is this program for you? And or is this a program that you would like to tell someone else about? Because as you've been listening and thinking about it, you begin to see in your mind's eye somebody who think, oh, this program would be excellent for them. And I'd like to hand over to Ryan so that he can give you what I can never give people, which is a student's view. I can tell you about the program. I can tell you about how I teach. I can tell you about what you get at the end, but I can't give you one of the most valuable things is what is it like to be a student on this program? So Ryan, over to you. Good evening, uh, everybody. Thanks for that, Svea. Um, you know, the one, one thing I learned very quickly about the course is just how brilliantly, Svea, you able to put things across. And it's, it's a lovely little trip down memory lane for me. So good to hear your voice and to see you again. And uh, good evening to everybody um, considering the course. Um, it's great to be asked to, to give this a testimonial, I suppose, and just some experiences. Um, so I, I suppose, let me just start um, who I am. I'm Ryan Stramrud. I, you know, I went to school and then university, and then I uh, um, joined my father in a little advertising business, which I bought from him eventually and running, uh, still running to this day. Um, but somewhere in the middle, I started to do something called swimming. I just wanted to change my lifestyle a little bit and, and joined a swimming squad. And that took me on this fascinating journey um, where I started to push my own boundaries first and slowly but surely that uh, on quite an interesting journey that I started to push um, the boundaries of not only myself, but eventually mankind around the world in some of the places, most inhospitable waters and, and uh, crazy, silly stuff to do, really. 
Um, how I quite got there, I'll never know. But that then led to me starting to share my story because while you're in some extremely cold waters and hostile places and pushing your boundaries uh, to your, your body's boundaries and your mind's boundaries to, to places that most didn't think was necessary, you learn a lot about yourself, um, things that you could never learn in a textbook. And before I knew it, I was getting more and more people asking me to share that story. So I started to, to, you know, firstly, just tell a few mates uh, over a few beers on, on what I used to do and you know, where I've been and what, where I had to go mentally. And that then snowballed into me standing, <clears throat> excuse me, on, on stages eventually, let's skip a few years forward, around the world. And I'll stand, I'm a global inspirational speaker, believe it or not. And I stand on these stages in, in all parts of the planet um, when we weren't in lockdown. Now I spend a lot of time behind a computer screen doing exactly this. Um, and what was happening, I would stand on a stage and give a wonderful keynote talk and everyone would clap and it would be wonderful and off, off I'd walk feeling good about myself delivering that particular story. But I was starting to get more and more people engaging with me after the talk and in my personal capacity, um, asking me questions they were too shy to put their hand up in the audience and ask um, and engaging me one on one. And I started to realize that essentially what I'm doing is I'm being put in a position where I have to coach and I've got no formal skills whatsoever. Um, people just wanted to be given some direction. And I started to feel a huge amount of pressure as this became more and more um, to give them that right advice, to tell them what they need to do with this problem. And this even went long, way beyond inspirational stuff and what you know, and stuff in the corporate place, I was starting to get people asking me marital stuff, and I'm the last person you want to ask that, but I was feeling all this pressure, um, and even though I wasn't in a corporate environment myself, it, it dawned on me that essentially I am managing a team. I do run a small business, I do do some management, but it's a sole proprietorship, so it's small, but what I was doing as a public speaker was I had a bunch of different teams almost from around the world, different continents, and lots locally, from different corporates asking me advice and seeing me just because I was on their stage as a leader or, or some kind of managerial position where they, they felt they could ask me this advice. And that's quite a responsibility that was starting to weigh on my shoulders. Um, and I realized I needed to formalize it, I suppose. But, you know, being a single dad and having a lighty and having jobs and needing to, to keep the home fires burning, at what point do you find the time to find a course and uh, figure this all out and maybe even go to lectures? I didn't know about the online stuff until, boom, lockdown hits. And all of a sudden, we've all got a little more time on our hands, uh, including myself, for various reasons. And it was through that process that I came across. Firstly, I was given the time and the presence of mind to say, right, what can I do in lockdown? And the one thing I could do was to help people because we could do it. Um, we could do it virtually. I wasn't, there were no stages to stand on all of a sudden. Um, and that is where I started to figure out I needed to formalize this a little bit and, and get the, the knowledge and, and, and those skills uh, to, to help the people a little better. And I came across the, the coaching skills for managers. And realized that I could do it from the comfort of my home wearing a pair of tracksuit pants and slippers. <laughs> I didn't have to drive to some lecture hall and, and get it done. So that was a big uh, tick for me. Um, and I also want to say at this point, I had graduated from the University of Stellenbosch in 1995. Um, so that's what 25 odd years later, I had done no studying, no courses, no anything. So I was actually hugely nervous about doing this course, signed up for it, um, it all looked very good. But um, I found myself in this peculiar position here. Here was I stand on these stages around the world, but I was quite scared to actually start this course. I didn't know what it was, you know, what the workload was going to be, what's the intensity, what the other delegates going to be like, um, how am I going to be exposed, what are the deliverables, I'm going to have to speak in front of these people and show them how to coach. Um, so I was very, very uh, nervous which I find uh, in retrospect quite amusing. Um, but as with most things with life, it was purely because it was an unknown. It was a little bit, um, you know, taking me out of my comfort zone, which is exactly what I preach on stages. Um, but it was very soon after that very first day, when you meet Surveyor and the team, and you see the other delegates and everybody gets a chance to introduce themselves, that everyone's in exactly the same boat. Everyone's a little bit nervous. Everyone's a little bit unsure if this is exactly the right thing to do for them and their positions. Um, and 
jumping 12 weeks down the line, I don't think there's one person who can say it wasn't an absolutely brilliant thing for them to do um, in, in, in any, you know, we all in diverse industries, I imagine. I don't know any of you, but, uh, you know, no one does exactly the same thing day to day. Um, <clears throat> so what that the course essentially did for me, if I had to nutshell it, is that for someone who was already essentially coaching or guiding and helping in a, in a very informal way, the course opened my eyes very significantly to a world of structure, uh, a world of steps and sequence, a world of theory and psychology, the amount of books that have been written around the subject of flabbergasted me, uh, and a world of professionalism, you know, what is right and what is wrong. Here was I feeling this huge pressure to give that advice and to tell every, you know, the people who came to me with problems, here's your solution. R wrong approach altogether. Um, and through the course, and through the reading we have to do, it's quite an intense amount of reading that you've got to do, make no mistake. Um, but you start to learn that so much of what I already knew or thought I knew, I think Surveyor alluded to this as well. And um, th there was very little that was revelation to me, like, wow, I never thought of that. But what was completely flipped on my head is what I knew, how I was handling it, that was flipped on my head, on, on its head, um, how to how to best handle the situations um, in a professional way, in a strategic way, in a structured way. And that for me is what I took out most. And in my business have now given me, I suppose, the confidence to rather encourage those people who want to come and talk to me, not duck off the stage and, and, and hide from them and, and avoid those, those awkward situations because now I know what to do. Um, now I've got a much better idea and, I, and, and, the, and the pressure's off and I've got the theory behind it. And the more you practice, the better you get. So for me personally, as a public speaker and I suppose a manager on a, on a, in, a, in a different sense of the word, absolute gold. So thanks, thanks to all. And I hope you all do sign up or, so that or recommend it to someone. And uh, I can guarantee you, you will take something amazing away from it uh, without a doubt. Over to you, Kaylin. That's me. So thank you, um, Diane and Surveyor, um, for sharing the information. Absolutely inspirational and motivating. Um, and it was shared with such passion and purpose, both, both from an educator's perspective as well from an alumni student. Before handing over to our admissions officer, Jade Williams, I would just like to remind you about the Q&A. So if you have any questions, please pop them into our question box below for our live answer session. Jade, I would like to hand over to you. Thanks, Kaylin. Um, well, my name is Jade. Um, I'm admissions officer at SACAP. Um, I assist with inquiries and applications for our coaching short course, Coaching Skills for Managers. The application process is quite simple. Um, just to recap, minimum entry requirement for the program is three years work experience in a current or intended managerial, supervisory or team leading position. Um, the course, um, we still open up for applications. We start the course on the 13th of September um, and registration is closed the 3rd of September. So you do have time now to apply. Um, I, would, I would recommend applying as soon as possible. There is a bit of an application process with a chat with me and um, uh, a few other things just to check. Um, the applications, um, it's a bit different to our other programs. You need to follow a link to a registration form. The link's on the screen and you also can find it on in the chat box a bit later. We'll share that link. Um, as well as our website, our SACAP website on our Coaching Skills for Managers page. You'll, you'll see a register now button. Click on that. We'll take you through to the registration form. Once you submit your application, um, myself, um, I will be processing applications. I'll go through the process with you step by step. Um, once you are accepted into the program, there is, um, you'll receive an outcome letter with the performer invoice or company invoice if you need be. Um, and then um, the process of registration is two payment options, either upfront or a monthly debit order form, which will be given via the, the invoice as well. Um, so that's it, it's quite a simple process. Um, back to you, Kaylin. Thank you. Thank you, Jade. Okay, so moving into our Q&A box. 
So there's a question from Tobeka. Will the program be running on a weekly basis every Monday? Jade, can I ask if you could possibly answer that? Okay, so the, the course is strictly online over 12 weeks. We start on the 13th of September. It will run on a weekly basis online. Um, it's aimed at professional students, so there's no um, day daytime classes or login time. Um, there's a live webinar each week, once a week, um, in the evenings only, so it is accessible to most working students. Um, so you cover everything on an online weekly basis. Thank you very much, Jade. There's also another question which I will also direct at you, um, and it comes from Goodman, who has asked, how much is the total fees of the course? deposits and installments, and do we attend full-time or online sessions? I know that you've answered the, the last question perhaps, mm -hmm. but maybe just to recap on the first two questions. Okay, so the registration process, we have two payment options. Um, first option would be an upfront payment of 16,000, which is the course price. Um, then we also have a monthly debit order form um, option, which is the monthly installment of 4,000. Um, the debit order form will run from September, October, November, um, the duration of the, of the online course, with initial payment of 4000 So in all, it totals to 16000 for the upfront, like the upfront payment amount. Thank you very much, Jade. There's a question from Bruchle, and I'm not quite sure, Ryan or Surveyor, would, which one of you would like to possibly answer that. But just in relation to the workload, Buchle would like to know, yeah, how is the workload? Um, well, I'll gladly give my perspectives. For, you can't answer it, Sve. You, <laughs> no, you, no, you can. Look, the, the, the workload was, was very manageable. Um, I mean, there is work to do. It's a serious course. It's an intense course. Um, but I think that's what you would expect. Um, but I, I found, you know, you, you do the, the uh, I presume things are similar, going to be similar, but you do the, the two hour session, you do some prep for that. Um, and then after that, you get some reading work to do until the next week, um, and maybe one or two exercises. So the actual day of the course was busy, the build up to the session, the session itself, and then, then afterwards, uh, you know, life went on. So the, the workload for me, in a nutshell, very, very manageable but there is work to do. Thank you, Ryan. Surveyor, would you like to perhaps answer from an educator's perspective? Sure, I just, I can add um, to that is, look, there's a, there's a principle of utilization, right? That I as an educator use, which is do the best that you can with, the, with what you have, um, instead of wishing it were different or waiting until it is. And I apply that to, to participants on the program as well. We all know that life happens, but as Ryan said, there is work to be done. At the same time, you are part of a collaborative experience. There's always somebody in the, in the course who's had more time in a particular week to read than you that alerts you to this is really useful or interesting. So I, as an educator, make sure that there's always some time in breakout rooms um, for discussion in the plenary whereby you will get clues and it kind of works out that over the 12 weeks, you'll find your particular focus areas that are relevant to you, but you'll also hopefully be inspired to go back to some of the resources. The other thing I think um, that I want to add is this is a program which is designed to be something that you can return to over and over again over the next whatever three years of your life. It's not designed to be a quick fix for a current problem that you've got. So again, while you've got some multiple choice questions that you need to answer each week um, where you can test how much have I absorbed and what do I need to still go back and look at. Um, I think Ryan's comments about there is work to be done, but it's very manageable. It's true. And I'm a benign educator who will push you to do your best. But this is not... Um, this is not a detention type of zone school. And you all know that in the workplace, we ask people to be accountable, but we also understand that they have circumstances. Thank you very much, Surveyor. And while I still have you on camera, um, Marianne has a question around the observed coaching session. Um, mm -hmm. The question reads, please can I have more details around the recorded session we need to submit? 
um, yeah, if you can maybe answer that, please. All right. Um, yeah, Ryan may like to also chime in briefly about it, but my, my sense is that the ICF has a particular stance, as does TACAP on this program, as do I, which is that you, we are looking to do cultivating growth. So yes, you are asked to make a recording. Um, you are supported in how to do that and how to make that also meaningful to the person that you are having a coaching conversation with rather than making it a favor that they do you. So we'll look at that together. You make a recording and then the idea is that it will give you the opportunity to get feedback. Um, the discipline that we bring to this is first comment on what the person is already doing, mastery, and then magnify and extend through developmental feedback. So you can expect that that is the intention, but that is also how we do it. Um, no, we can't make it not a nerve wracking experience for many of you, but I do think that it is something which is part of becoming um, more and more, I guess, aware of being able to direct yourself. So I just wonder if Ryan might like to pop in and just say something about, you know, before, during and after, Ryan, how that experience was for you. Yes, yeah, sorry, my, my connection faltered a little bit there, but I, I heard my name. Um, the, the, the task at the end, just, just so I jump in if, I, if, I, if I'm off topic, but the, the task at the end um, caused lots of, of trepidation and tension and, and worries amongst us all, um, myself included. And of course, like everything else in life, once you actually do it, um, it, it wasn't that hard and it was probably the best thing you could probably have forced us to do or encouraged us politely to do it as part of the course um, because it actually forces you to, to put into practice some of the stuff you've learned and no matter how well you, you think you know all the theory um, and you think it seems so easy to be able to do it until you're actually sitting in front of somebody and, and trying it, um, it's not that easy. Um, so yeah, I, I found that daunting up until the, the point of actually doing it, and I found the feedback from that probably the most useful thing of the entire course, um, where you get a one-on-one -on -one session to to actually analyze what you've done. And there's no, as you say, there's no big whip or whatever. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's no there's no right or wrong, and there's no failure. There's only comment and correction and constructive criticism around it. Um, I, I hope that helps. Surveyor, and thank you, Ryan. There's another question from Mary Ann um, around other written, other written assessments. Um, Surveyor, would you like to answer, perhaps? Um, yes, and won't you, Kaylin, also just chime in um, about this because, okay, so um, I think the great relief is no, you won't have to do long essays with things like. Uh, worrying about referencing and all that stuff. Um, this is a program which is professional and practical. So what you can expect in terms of written things is uh, multiple choice questions to give you an opportunity to test your own learning through what you've done in the reading. Um, you can expect that you will be writing in the form of creating what I call a practice companion and some people might call it a toolkit that you will be busy making yourself cards, mind maps, whatever works for you. So that will definitely be the idea is build yourself resources each week from the theory and from the practice and start to create for yourself something that really works for you. I often show people my little book. It's a little plastic uh, thing like kids use for projects in which you can't see the content, in which I keep things I used to do coaching in gold mines, which were very dirty places. And so I had, I use this little plastic book. Um, other people have beautiful cards, electronic things. So that is more the focus, is to build yourself a resource kit so that you've got that for use in the workplace. And the other thing to say is, if you, you know, I know that I often use this example. If you call an electrician, a plumber, take your car to the mechanic, go to the dentist, um, see your accountant, you don't expect them to have no equipment. They don't just sort of turn up with just their head and go, I am here. What is your question? Um, and that is the same that we really encourage people who do this course is it is a good idea to build yourself up the equivalent of professional equipment that you can use on an ongoing basis. So I hope that that gives you a sense of that the written assignments, if you want to call them that, 
are largely self-directed. They are largely to do with your particular workplace and what you think you're going to need. And whether you type them, write them, draw them, do collages, that we leave to you. Um, the only thing that is required is this multiple choice. And that's a click, a few clicks. Thank you, Sophia. I think to maybe just add to that, um, I always experience the weekly multiple choice quizzes to actually be an opportunity for students to consolidate their learning. So you kind of go through the, the audio, the video recordings, you go through your readings, you attend the weekly webinar, and then you have discussions in the classroom, but the MCQs will usually take place at the end of that week. So it is an opportunity to kind of consolidate the learning um, and then to put it into practice. Um, yeah, with, with a staff member, with a friend, with a spouse. Um, yeah, so as Surveyor said, not necessarily written, um, but you can obviously create your own. Surveyor, there's another question also from um, Marianne with regards to the coach practitioner program. So Marianne asks, I'm planning on doing the CPP next year. Will I be duplicating effort or expense if I do this course too? Um, Marianne, I can offer you and anyone else who's interested in that question. The CPP is a program which is a professional uh, coaching program and it's got many more hours of coach education in it, et cetera. Um, I've taught, I teach on both and I'm aware of both. So, and for that, yeah, just also be aware that there's what I call a lot of alphabet soup in this coaching game, like CPP and this and that. Um, what you will get from coaching skills for managers is a very good opportunity to make up your mind whether you prefer to stay in leadership and management and use coaching skill as a methodology, or whether you prefer to move into beginning a journey which could qualify you to be a professional coach with what's called a, a credential, um, or to have a practitioner status with Comenso, which is the other organization um, that the coach practitioner program is recognized by. So my answer is there is obviously some overlap, but no, I don't. The experience I've had is of people who've gone on this journey is that they've reported that they found this an excellent foundation, which was very workplace oriented. And then they went into the coach practitioner program, which was more equipping them to do individual coaching um, at the time. And with also a focus on if you're working as a coach in your role, which is different from if you are a leader, a manager, um, a supervisor of some sort, and using that role using coaching skills. So I think that they um, go together well, and I don't think that you would find it's a waste of time. In fact, I think it would be an advantage at the beginning of your coach practitioner program having done this program. Kaylin, is there anything you want to add from other students who've done that journey? Because I know there have been people who've, who've been on the journey. Yeah, thank you, Sabaya. I think you've answered the question quite with great depth. Um, my experience also is that the, yeah, the student completing coaching um, skills for managers will have an advantage when they start the coach practitioner because they would also have an overview of the core competencies um, and some sort of introduction and a practical application to it. Um, the coach practitioner program would obviously just allow for like a deeper dive, more training hours. Um, yeah, and obviously more introductions and training on like the different coaching models. Okay, so we've come to the end of our live Q&A session. Um, if we have not answered your question or um, if you still have a burning question, yeah, please, um, please leave your email address in the chat box below and yeah, so either your email address and your query, and then our team will be in contact with you. We will also make the session available on our social media platforms in case you have missed a few points during the session. Thank you and have a great evening further. <laughs>